obey without hesitation my every command. Get ready for the ultimate display of brain power in Scanners 3 The Takeover, or Scanner Force as it was originally retitled in Great Britain. These guys are fantastic. <laughs> no! Look, Robin. Shot back to back with Scanners 2 The New Order, Scanners 3 also saw Christian Duguay back in the director's chair, only this time he wanted to make his second sequel a lot slicker, wilder and ironic. Suck on this! He also wanted to shoot it somewhere a lot warmer than Montreal in the winter. Pushed by the wind chill factor to 40 below zero temperatures, the tough shooting conditions on Scanners 2 had actually shut production down for a while. So the moment Scanners 2 wrapped, Duguay took his new cast and crew off to sunny Thailand for two weeks of the third film's nine-week shooting schedule. That's the location of the monastic retreat where Alex Monet, played by Steve Parrish, goes to meditate to control his telepathic powers. Meanwhile, back home in Montreal, his adopted sister Helena, played by Liliana Komarovska, has taken an experimental scan suppressant drug in the hope it will cure her migraines. The flashing plastic neck patches that administer steady doses of the drug instead cause violent personality changes, and Helena turns into a monstrous megalomaniac, avenging herself against all those who wronged her in the past. Now, what do you say? I'm sorry. No, that's not it. Once more scripted by B.J. Nelson and David Preston, who had co-written The Vindicator for producer Pierre David, Scanners 3 was based on an idea considered for a Scanners television series that was developed but never actually happened. Connecting to the Cronenberg original in the name of the untried scanner drug, ephemeral in scanners, F3 here. You took F3. <laughs> and it works wonderfully, Daddy. You're a genius. Scanners 3 boasts welcome extras to the mind-killing mix. There's a neat comic edge to certain scenes. The blown-up pigeon. <laughs> The first clue to Helena's growing power. There's Thai kickboxing martial arts. <laughs> and there's the now obligatory awesome exploding head scene, only this time taking place underwater. <laughs> Director Duguay had earned a reputation as a pretty cool Steadicam operator. Paul Mazursky's Enemies A Love Story was one of his many credits in that area. So to save time and keep on schedule, he would often strap on the camera himself in favour of lengthy setups. The opening scene, set during a Christmas party that ends in tragedy, is a perfect example. That's why this Scanners episode exudes a remarkable pace and energy. Polish actress Liliana Komarowska is another reason the movie works so well. Projecting beauty and a radiant charm, she makes the most of her scanner super bitch role, especially when Helena compels her boss to perform a strip act and forces a couple to make love on a live TV show. Duguay would work with Komarovska again in his 1995 Philip K. Dick adaptation, Screamers. I hope you're not experiencing any technical difficulties, George. I interviewed producer Pierre David on the Hollywood set of the follow-up Scanner Cop, and he told me then how proud of the sequels he was. He felt they carried the Cronenberg ethos forward and made more effective use of the Scanner character's strengths and weaknesses. The Scanners don't just stare at their prey here, they whip their heads at them. And then there's a tribute to A Clockwork Orange, with Alex repelling laser beams with his mind. I wanted to add something more personal to the Scanners mythology, he said. With the sequels, I felt I'd finally done that. <laughs> 